So in this video, uh, I want to introduce the consumption function. The consumption function plays an important role in the determination of equilibria in the goods market in the short run, and uh, therefore it deserves uh, uh, a good introduction here. The consumption function um, uh, can be looked at algebraically and graphically. Uh, let's start out uh, with uh, simply the graph and uh, we get the intuition right and uh, afterwards look at the uh, look at the algebra so here we have consumption and here we have yd which is disposable income let me add that here yd is equal to y minus t so t uh, are lump sum taxes that households pay uh, and uh, income is their uh, is the income uh, macroeconomically y is equal to value added uh, namely all the income that goes to uh, the owners of machinery and firms and such and uh, and workers and uh, at the same time y is equal to production of course so the value of all goods and services produced in uh, in an economy in a given time period so macroeconomically disposable income of households of the private sector is equal to uh, GDP minus taxes. Now the consumption function in this CYD space uh, looks like this. It has an intercept, a positive intercept and a positive slope uh, is upward sloping straight line. So, um, what does that mean? Well, suppose that we start out, no, suppose that we start out right here. Oh, that is, apologies, messing up everything here. Okay, suppose that we, uh, the economy is at a point like this then uh, disposable income for private households would determine that uh, C is uh, C takes some value here which I will denote with this cross on the axis. Now uh, if disposable income of households rises by uh, this amount uh, consumption would rise by this amount. I'm going to denote this point by the circle. So the key insight is that the increase in disposable income is larger than this increase in consumption. But the increase in consumption is positive. So out of any additional dollar in income, households spend a fraction on consumption. What do they do with the rest? They'll save it. So how can we express that algebraically? Quite simple. C is equal to uh, C0, some autonomous uh, component of consumption, plus, plus C1 times Y minus T. So C0 then is this autonomous component of consumption, some amount of dollars that households spend on consumption independent of their income but then uh, as their disposable income rises they spend of any additional dollar uh, a fraction C1 very important uh, C1 is between 0 and 1 C1 is of course the marginal propensity to consume MPC and the name uh, says what it does the marginal propensity to consume so as income increases marginally households have that propensity to consume out of that additional dollar so let's just take an example um, if C1 were three quarters 0.75 if then disposable income rises by one dollar uh, consumption will rise by 75 cents 
the remaining 25 cents will go to savings. That is basically what the consumption function is. We can look at the consumption function though in still a little more detail. Let me add a new page and uh, write the consumption function down here once more. Y minus T. We can, for example, uh, expand the expression and write C1 minus C0 minus C1T plus C1Y. That then means... Uh, yeah, come in. Hi. Hi, Diksha. How's it going? Are you busy? I'm actually... I'm just okay, recording. Okay. I'll see you. Uh, Ten minutes or so. Okay. Or yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's. Okay. Where was I? Uh, we can write the consumption function as uh, a function of y directly rather than y d. That means then, in terms of the graph, uh, we'd have again a intercept here c is a function of y that rather than yd and the intercept would be c0 minus c1 times t the slope of it is the same though namely c1 uh, so uh, let's, let's try that again c and yd so you see the difference here is just the intercept. Uh, since we either account for taxes on this axis or on this intercept. Relevant later when we put the goods market model together, I just wanted to show it now. Um, it is uh, relevant though as well because we can uh, sh derive from the consumption function a savings function. So let's go to that as well. Add a new page here. The savings function. So C is equal to C0 plus C1 times Y minus T and the savings function, well, what is savings? Savings is everything that is left over after you received your income, paid your taxes, and consumed. So we can uh, therefore write uh, S equal to Y minus T minus C0. So we're using this expression to plug it in here. C0 minus C1 Y minus T. And that, of course, can be simplified to give us a S equal to minus C0 plus 1 minus C1 Y minus T. So we have a negative intercept, the negative of C0. We have a positive slope, namely 1 minus the marginal propensity consume. Or, in other words, since that is as well between 0 and 1, the marginal propensity to save, the marginal propensity to save is, of course, 1 less the marginal propensity to consume. Right? So we can write S1 is equal to 1 minus C1, or C1 is equal to 1 minus S1. The marginal propensity to consume is equal to 1 minus the marginal propensity to save. How do we put that in a graph? Quite analogous to what we had previously, namely S and Y. We just need the negative intercept here, minus C0, and a positive slope but a sh more shallow slope 
if we assume that C, C1 is larger than 1 half, namely 1 minus C1. And then this denotes the amount of savings. So I'll leave it at that as an introduction to the consumption function. The key is that we have uh, a positive but less than one marginal propensity to consume and that we can express that in this graph where we have autonomous expenditures on this, uh, on this axis as the intercept and then the consumption rising with additional dollars of income according to C1.